You know, magnets are a wonderful toy for teachers and students alike to use. Uh, I'm not really sure how magnets work. There are theories, of course, lots of ideas. Uh, we have lots of laws that tell us uh, how magnets, the way they react with each other and the strength of their reactions. But why do magnets actually attract each other is, is I, as far as I know, still not really well known. That doesn't stop me from using them, though, in trying to uh, help students understand things, because magnetism is a very good analogy, but it is just an analogy for electrostatic attraction, why opposites attract each other and like charges repel each other. It is related, certainly magnetism and electricity are related to each other, so there's something similar there. But the idea of magnets attracting each other is a very useful property. These neodymium magnets are extremely powerful, so powerful that I can put one on top and one on the bottom and they, they stay on my hand. Uh, they go right through there. Now there are some people who say that magnetism will, will cure um, circulatory problems. They use it in treatment of animals. Some people themselves putting in your gasoline tank to take out the, the bad ions that reduce the, uh, the mileage in your car. Now, so there's a lot of scamming going on, but nevertheless they do attract each other. And I make use of that property of these very strong magnets by placing them inside a tennis ball. And I take the tennis ball and I cut it along a seam with an X-Acto knife, cutting a seam, and then jamming one of these neodymium magnets into the tennis ball. It's free to roam around in there. And if I have two of them, I have the perfect analogy for the attraction between molecules. And sometimes I can actually get good, so you want to get a really long shot here. But there, how even in midair when they collide, they attract with each other. In some classrooms, you can take one of these tennis balls and throw it in the air, and it will stick to the metal portions of the ceiling. And that's quite a discrepant event. And then the event is, how do I get it down from there? And that's another problem that we have to worry about. But the attraction between magnets helps me teach that electrostatic attraction between electrons and protons, between cations and anions, between positive and negatives of anything, but it is still just an analogy. One of the other ways that I use it is with a cow magnet and a paper clip. I have in this apparatus a thermometer clamp holding on to a cow magnet. And the cow magnet has been stuffed through a styrofoam ball. The other styrofoam ball has a paper clip stuffed through it and one end of the paper clip has been tied down with a piece, piece of fishing line. Okay, it may not be visible to the students back in the back of the room, so it looks even better. But there is a, a string attaching the paper clip through the styrofoam ball. The paper clip is attached then to the base of the ring stand. You put this in the right place, it may look like one ball is floating in midair beneath another. What I'm illustrating here to the students is the idea of a dipole-induced dipole attraction, an intermolecular attractive force between a permanent dipole. Here we have the permanent magnet. It has a north and a south pole, but it's attracting a paper clip, which is not magnetic. It doesn't have by itself a north and a south pole. Yet coming near a magnet, a magnetic field is induced in the paper clip. So that there is in the paper clip now a north and south pole, and so the two attract each other. This is the way a permanent dipole, a molecule or an atom which has a dipole moment, can attract another molecule which does not have as long as that molecule is polarizable, that the electrons can be moved around. This force of attraction is quite strong, not, not so extremely strong, but it is strong enough to hold them together and strong enough to pass through a sheet of cardboard. And still they attract each other. In fact, that force can go through pane of glass. But then glass is transparent, and so you can see through glass. Obviously, whatever this force is could get through glass. 
piece of aluminum. Again, it penetrates this sheet of, well, that's a light sort of metal. Let's try a metal that's even heavier. How about copper? Yeah, indeed, that force of attraction goes right through the copper metal. I know, lead. Even Superman can't see through lead. But this force goes right through the lead. Well, that force even passes through a thick piece of wood. Can we break that force of attraction? One atom, one molecule, however you want to use it, is attracted to another. Can we split them apart? Can the electron be removed from the proton? Well, yes, it takes a certain amount of energy to cut that line of attraction like that. Well, there is a trick there. You have to do it just at the right speed and just at the right time. But if you get that effect, the magnetic force, the magnetic field, is diverted through the steel of the blades of the scissors. And so it no longer attracts the paper clip as strongly as before, and gravity takes over and pulls them down. It is just an analogy. And I make my students say that. They will answer that what holds atoms together is magnetic force. Why is an electron attracted to a proton? Because they are magnets. If I don't make them and I'm clear with them, this is, say it together with me, just an analogy. Say it again, it's just an analogy. It's not the real thing.